Hi there, I've been reading on some of the forums that people are interested in finding a little bit more out about this device, the Sonoff iHost. So let's have a look. So this device is being promoted as a local private server for your home. Inside they're offering fast, reliable automations, device data that stays local, compatible with many devices, an open API and add-on integrations, and powered by the EWILINK Cube. So what is the hardware here? We've got an LED indicator at the front. We've got four function buttons on the top. On the rear side, we've got an SD card slot, a USB 2, a 5 volt 2 amp USB-C power supply, and a 100 megabit Ethernet port. We've got two hardware options here, a 1109 or a 1126. The 09 is a dual core 1.5 gigahertz processor with two gigs of RAM and eight gigs of storage. On the 1126, we've got four gigs of storage. It offers both Zigbee and Wi-Fi communication as well as Bluetooth. So it's pretty easy to get started. You just plug in your ethernet cable and your power supply. Once you've got that, you type in iHost.local and it will pop up with this interface. It's pretty easy to navigate your way around. You start off with the home button on the left side at the top. The home button is, seems to be where all of your devices are shown. So for example, if we wanted to add a new device, we just go plus and we have a number of ways that we can add devices. So we can go in here and we can add Zigbee devices, for example. We just go start setup and it would start searching for any Zigbee devices that it could find in the location that have been set to pairing mode. They're telling us it supports up to 128 Zigbee devices. Now I have tested this and I was able to connect both Sonoff Zigbee devices as well as other Zigbee devices. They've also got a Matter device linking here. I can see this is in a beta mode and I haven't tried loading any Matter devices as yet. RTSP camera streams can be loaded as well as ESP cams. You can also connect other devices that are on the Wi-Fi network. Um, I'll show you later how that works. So if we go back to our devices, you can see here that I've added a number of devices. For example, we've got a light switch here. This is a Sonoff light switch, and I can go along and I can control that. We've got a Zigbee light. This is just a generic Zigbee color bulb that I've connected up to there. We've got a temperature sensor. We've got a button, so pretty easy just to add your devices. Once your devices have been added, you can then go along and create automations. So in this system, they call automations scenes. So for example, I could say I want to create a new scene. And for example, I might want to turn on a light. So what I would do, I would go along and I would add some type of trigger. So I could either add a device trigger. So that could be anything from any of the devices that I've got there. I could add a timer. So that might be at a certain time. I can do a sunrise or sunset or tap to run. So for, say for example, we set a device. So we might say when the button is pressed, um, then we want to do something. So I'm going to say what I want to do is I want to set up a smart device. I want to do something with that smart device. And we'll say, select that slight light switch, for example. And we'll say, we're going to use this light switch, channel one. And we're going to say, turn gate one of that switch on, done, and save. And that's how easy it is to create a basic scene, which will turn a light on based on a button press. Next up, we have security. So security is a like a little alarm that you can set up within the system. So what you do, there's three modes, home mode, away mode, and sleep mode. So once you do this, you go into home mode, and over here, you can now select your alarm volume. You can use the speaker on the device. Um, it can either keep alarming, or you can set a custom time for how long you want it to go off. And then over here, you can start selecting from your devices which devices you want to have included in your alarm. 
and then you can basically set it to go off or you can arm it by just pressing one of these buttons. Um, the cost is basically the dashboards of this device. So we can go along and we can create dashboards. So if you have a look at this dashboard I've got here, um, I've, got a, um, I've got one of my power monitoring devices. You can see there it's showing how much power I'm using. I've created my alarm system down here. So I can press buttons to set the alarm. I've got a clock and these are quite easy. You can basically drag these around. It's all drag and drop. So you can move these things around. You've got a phone version, which is a vertical screen and you've got an iPad or a desktop version. So this is how you create your screens. You can save them and then you can go and visit them. So you can go along and have a look at those dashboards anywhere on your local uh, network. The system is all local. There is a way of setting up a, a remote access, but the first, first and foremost, this system has been designed to be completely local. On your network. Next up we have Docker and this is where you can start adding in extra containers of functionality to this system and you'll see that I've imported a whole lot of these already. So I've got the Homebridge, this is communicating with the Apple HomeKit, we've got Node-RED, we've got Tasmota, Tailscale, so that's for connecting devices, we've got the Weather, that's like a weather reporting app, um, we've got the uh, Mosquito Broker, we've got a File Browser, EWILINK Smart Home. This one is really key. What this basically allows you to do is to bring in any devices that you've connected via Wi-Fi into your, um, into your EWILINK app, for example. You can basically come and bring those back into this system. So if we go back to our Docker, these are the, the add-ons and we can go and we can search. There's a whole repository where you can search for a whole lot more of these. And you can start linking these up and playing around with them. So I haven't played around a huge amount, but there seems to be quite a lot of functionality and apparently they're adding more and more of these as they go on. Now, in order to use this functionality, you do need to insert a uh, SD card into the device because that's where it stores all this information so that it can run. Next up we have the Meta. Now I haven't actually started using the Meta. Um, it is in beta mode so I'm assuming it's quite limited at the moment. There are only certain types of devices you can add but obviously they will be growing this as this device is used more. Some of the other features, this EWILINK remote control. Now this sounds quite cool. Basically what it is, is taking advantage of the Sonoff EWILINK devices that are working together on your home. And it basically uses 433 MHz radio waves to communicate over a long distance. I think they're claiming something like up to 150 meters. So for example, if everything went down, these two devices could still communicate over the radio waves without being connected to the um, iHost. That's my understanding at least. Now this is only being launched in November. So as of today, I did try it. It's not available yet, but hopefully it will be soon. Um, finally, we've got the settings over here. So this is where we can go. We can change our password. We can set the time zone, adjust the volume. Um, we can go down here and we can have a look at the version so we can check for updates. We can back up and restore. And we can also see what's going on with our processor. You can see you've got your CPU and your memory, power on time, and even the temperature of the chip. You can also see this down the bottom here if you like. So that gives you a really brief intro into this device. Please let me know in the comments below what you do think of this device and what are the uses that you could see using this. And if you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.